With just hours left till the Iowa caucuses tonight, we're taking a look at which candidates are in the strongest financial positions heading into tonight's contest. And Yahoo Finance's Kristen Myers joins us now to break the numbers down. And Kristen, what can you tell us as we're looking at the field right now? Yeah, so there was an FEC deadline filing, filing deadline on Friday. So we've now been able to see the 2019 total. So on Friday, I know we talked a little bit about how well Donald Trump had been doing, just as a brief reminder for everyone. He pulled in just under $144 million in the year, just his campaign. I'm not including the RNC or other fundraising communities in that total. You guys can see how well he did throughout the year. Um, after Donald Trump, you have Bernie Sanders. Uh, right here, we have that he brought in for the year almost $109 million dollars, which is pretty incredible. So we're actually starting to see that gap somewhat close because Donald Trump has really been beating the Democrats pretty handily uh, every single quarter, particularly among grassroots fundraisers. Yeah. After him, we've got Elizabeth Warren, who has roughly 82 million. Then Pete Buttigieg, Mayor Pete, he brings in about almost 77 million dollars. Um, when it comes to those fundraising totals. Now, Joe Biden, he actually didn't have Q1 on his side. As we remember, he announced a little bit late. He actually came in at around $61 million uh, for the year. Now, rounding out the bottom, this might not be good news for you, Zach. We've got Amy Klobuchar and Andrew Yang uh, down at the bottom. Uh, Amy's dead last here among some <clears throat> of these candidates. She pulled in almost $29 million. Uh, Andrew Yang actually, surprisingly, did much better than her, 31 million dollars. Well, he also has the surprising trend of raising more money each yes, quarter. Yes, he did. Is... I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because as you are seeing, a massive uptick from Q3 and then really strong into Q4, 16 and a half million there. But this is the cash on hand totals. <clears throat> I do want to mention that um, because while Donald Trump has $102 million cash on hand, Andrew Yang has the least amount of cash on hand. He only has about $3.7 million that you guys can see there. He's been spending He's quite been, as much. They've, they have been spending a lot of money on digital ads and they've started to you started to see that spending really um, uptick and increase towards the end of the year. But in total, amongst those Democrats, those six Democratic candidates, they pulled in about $388 million. Yeah, so I mean, uh, pulling that all together yeah. is pretty impressive when you think about President Trump. But but what do you, you stood on the stage with a lot of these Yeah, I, I did. I think we all need to take a step back and look at this and recognize how obscene this is. $388 million, that's what we're spending on. Uh, we should have federal funding. We should have public funding, I mean, of all federal campaigns. This just shows the obscenity. This will be a multi-billion dollar presidential race. And to me, uh, this is the horse race that I was talking about. And let's also remember that money isn't everything. Hillary Clinton spent a lot more money than Donald Trump did. But because of all this concentration on money, because of the money that is necessary to do this, it actually eats away at the larger conversations we should be having mm -hmm. about where America is, where it's been, and where we are going. And so to me, hearing that that is just such a case for public funding for federal campaigns. So this is obscene, impressive. and it's only going to get worse. Is it more impressive than when we talk about the candidates and mm -hmm. Biden, uh, or I should say Bernie Sanders, has been pretty outspoken about not taking money from special interests, right? And, and, well, and the whole cave issue. Came and it's up. pretty beautiful if you if you think about how much money Bernie Sanders has made because Bernie Sanders these are these smaller donations from the people and it and and I think also that's an important part of this not just how much money you raise but where you raised it from and he's he's raising it among people as a, as are uh, a lot of them. A, a, a lot of them right. from people who just want their twenty dollars their thirty dollars even their ten dollars right. to matter even on the other that side too President Trump time. also had a pretty right strong so typically Republicans mainly rely on those big billionaire, the mega million dollar donors essentially giving to their campaigns. Donald Trump has been the only Republican that has been able to buck that trend and get those small dollar donors. That's typically $20, $30 on average each time. Now, as a whole, however, Republicans have not done very well at that. So you have Act Blue, that's that online fundraising platform. We've talked about this a lot. 2019, they actually pulled in over a billion dollars on that's <clears throat> donations under $200. The average size was roughly $30 that donors were giving. On the flip side, however, when Red, which is the Republican version of Act Blue, they are not, they did not pull in nearly 
close to as now, much uh, as much as the Democrats do. For our viewers, those that were looking at the numbers earlier, mm -hmm. that's just direct donations to those campaigns that would yes. not cover any super PAC yes. money that are supporting those candidates. No, no, not at all. So that's just the campaigns, because as we were talking about last week, when you include, for example, Trump, right, he pulled in one hundred and forty three million for the year. But when you include Trump, the RNC fundraising committees, et cetera, yeah. they pulled in almost half a billion right, dollars for 2019. Right. So once you really start to add in all of the other uh, financing that goes into any campaign, then you really start to see these numbers snowball. Yeah. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.